we're going to get the head reassembled. Uh, I had one bent valve on the exhaust side. I'll show you on how to set up springs and what I do to make sure everything is set up properly. You probably need to know how to do this anyway because you may be changing valve springs at the racetrack. You may be changing it as part of your normal, you know, monthly or every few months or half a year maintenance. So check it out, how to set up valve springs. Okay, so I got the head laid out on the workbench, got my tools, my supplies. This is something you're gonna need to do this. This is a, a micrometer for checking valve springs. It's pretty simple to use. Um, it just goes down on here, and then you put your retainer on it and your, your locks, and then you just roll it out, and that will tell you the measurements. And it's, it's very accurate. These are pretty inexpensive as well. And you can see if, if, you, if you roll this, this is checking installed height of the springs. So that's a, a 1.90 installed height. Um, anybody that sets up heads should have this. I do, I don't remember what I need the installed height at. So I'm gonna have to pull off another exhaust. I'm gonna pull off this neighbor here. And the valve job, he just took this off so he could do the valve job on it. Um, and just put it back together, but I just wanna make sure. And you can see he done the valve job on these. And that's my new valve that is popped in there. And he, had to, he did have to cut it down in there a little bit deeper from where it did have some some issues which you can see on the on the valve it's got a nice cut in it or a nice mark where it's, it, it is touching and it's all sealed up nice and tight you know a good job on that you had to go down in there and, and poured it out a little bit from where the cutter had to go a little bit deeper so um since it did have to set the valve in there a little deeper you can feel it it is inset versus this one probably 25, 30 thousandths. So I am gonna to have to change the spring uh, shims, the shims under that retainer to get it to where it needs to be. Okay, so you can see I got this on. My retainer is on it, my locks are in it. So now we're gonna do is spin it out. So we're gonna twist it. You want it to be pretty snug. The valve is going to push up on there pretty tight. And just that simple. Now this king shaft is not, that I have is not huge. So that makes a difference as well on, you know, how to install them. 1.9, so 1.90 must have been my target. So I'm at 1.910 it looks like. But, um, so that's my spring height on this one. So let's check the other one and see where we're at. Okay, so just got this one run up with the mic. And you can see this one is reading uh, 1.940 almost, 38. So when he done the valve job, he told me he had to cut it in there a little bit deeper. So, I mean, that's just part of the valve job that he had to do because the, the seat was so damaged. So the only other choice was to do that or either cut that seat out and start over, but it's not gonna make any difference. So what I'll do is I'm gonna pull off the uh, seal, protects us the, the hardened seat that protects the head. And then I've got some shims under it. So we'll measure the shims and we'll see what we gotta do. So we need it to be, to get like the other one, um, 25 thousandths or so taller. So let's see if we got it. Okay, so I got me another shim. I got another 30. So we needed 25, so I found another 30. Um, that's all I had, so that's gonna work. So we're gonna stick that back on. Both of the hardened shims go on. And then the spring cup locator, that's what this thing's called. And it's, a, it's, it's hardened steel and it's also designed to uh, protect the head. But you can see one of the things that you have to be careful of, they got a whole bunch of different sizes. So this has to fit in that bottom spring. It's a spring locator. So this is on the head and that's what holds the spring in place. Now the retainer in the top does the same thing. I mean, the retainer has steps in it as well. So the spring will go into the retainer, but it's always better in your top and bottom. Otherwise, if this is in here, you can see the, the spring pocket is a little bigger. So there's a chance the spring could dance around a little bit. Um, so that's why you put the put this part in it okay so let's check the um let's put it in there and check the installed height again and see if we're at where we need to be okay so we got that one set up so this is with the new um 30 thousandths edition 
So now that is a uh, 1.9050 installed height. So that is pretty good. The one beside it was a 1.910. So that is dead on the money. So that is what we're going to go with. And so we're going to reinstall it and put those springs back on. Okay, so about to put these springs back on. I got the one back on, the new one, so it's all done. So I was fixing to put this other one back on. And then I decided I was going to talk to you guys a little bit about springs, picking the right spring. So these are PAC uh, PAC 1226 springs. So you've got to look, there's a couple things you got to look at. Uh, I mean, if you get a camshaft, you know, your camshaft guy ought to be able to spec your, your springs for you. But if you end up, uh, you know, doing it yourself or picking off the shelf camshaft, then, you know, you can do this yourself, but you got to know what you're doing. You got to know how to figure it out. It's always recommended to have, you know, the person that specs your camshaft, you know, tell you what spring you want to go on it. So when you look at the description for these springs, they say they can take up to 800 inch lift and they can, and that's a very accurate statement, but it also could be misleading if you don't know what you're looking for. But if you were to install this spring set on a cam that was only 600 inch lift, you could have major problems. So um, when you get into the specs of it, so there are 1.55 outside diameter, the installed height where they say they are good to uh, 800 lift, they're saying you need to install them at two inches. So y'all saw earlier, mine are at 1.90, you know, it's a hundred thousandths less than what they recommend. So the, the spring at that two inch installed height, uh, they have a 275 pound load. So of course, the more you compress it, the more spring pressure you have, the more seat pressure you have. Um, so mine's a little higher than that. And I'll show you the chart uh, that, that they use. And so you can guess guesstimate pretty close on what your spring pressure is going to be um, on your installed height. Here's the spring chart for mine. It's the bottom one, the PAC 1226. So here are the specs for them. And this chart is the spring rate chart. And this is the one that shows you at what installed height gives what spring pressure. Again, mine is on the right hand side. So when you look at this, when you get to the 1.90, which is what I have my installed height at, you can see that it's got 341 pounds on the seat. Coil bind for these springs are 1.15 inches. My camshaft is only 700 lift. So if I would have installed these springs at the recommended two inch height at max lobe lift, I would have not compressed the spring enough and the maximum open pressure would have been about 65 pounds less. That is the reason I used an installed height of 1.90 instead of two inches. Now I don't have a Spintron or a high speed camera, but the people that do have some have shared some videos and you can see what happens when you lose control of the valve. At high RPM, if the spring is not compressed really close to coil bind, as the spring is compressing and extending, the individual coils are also bouncing. This is called spring surge. You lose control of the valve, and this is very problematic for proper valve terrain control. Good. So you want to run, and there's a whole lot of different people. There's a lot of people that recommend different things, but um, generally somewhere between 50 thousandths and 100 thousandths before coal bind. You don't want it to coal bind, of course, because if you coal, if you coal bind the spring, you're going to break some valve terrain parts. Rocker arms, you're going to be in push rods, you're going to have, you know, some issues. Something's got to give. If this coal bind being 1.15, my camshaft is just barely over 700. So then you do the math. So 1.15 plus 0 0.700, that gives you 1.85. So I like to run them a little tight, like 50 to 60 thousandths on the, uh, you know, the, the coal bind. And so that's how I got that 1.90, 1.91. So, you know, in that range, I've got about 50 to 60 thousandths before it coal binds. And something else you want to do, I mean, you know, sometimes I always just randomly check. I don't check them all, but I do make sure, I mean, these springs, you know, they're, they're made by machines and equipment. And I know good companies are out there, but sometimes some squeak by that the coal bind height might be a little bit different. So I'm gonna show you how I check them. I check them in a vise. And what you have to do is when you're checking it in a vise, you have to put the retainer on it and you make sure the retainer snaps down in there good. 
Um, you know, sometimes that's a problem I have seen and I have caught is I bought a set of retainers that I thought was going to work. And the retainer, the spring didn't go down in there. And so too big and the, the, the inner spring would not go down around that step. And so the inner spring never made it to it. So those would have coil bind a lot sooner. The inner spring would have coil bound and then it would have probably broke the spring um, and, you know, a bunch of valve train parts. So you always want to make sure your retainers fit good um, and they've snapped down in there like they're supposed to and the spring doesn't stick out. And that's especially important if you get into the triple springs where you've got, you know, three steps. You know, that stuff's important to look at. So what I do is I, I clamp them up in a vise. And this distance, when it when it compresses, it will be from the, the bottom of the retainer here to this. And I put it in a vise, and then I make sure that it goes at least to that 1.15 like it's advertised. And, you know, be careful because it's under a lot of pressure. So, you know, it might not be recommended if you have a one of those little cheap uh, flimsy vices. we got a great big vise, so we can stick it in there and not have any issues. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. But do that at your own risk. Okay, so you see I got this thing clamped up in the vise. It does have the retainer on it. This is that big Mac Daddy vise. But you want to be careful. They also make a tool that you can stick in here, um, open this up, and it can check spring pressures. And it, all it is is a little gauge. You stick it in the vise and, and clamp it down. And as you get to the installed height, what it does is it just reads the spring pressure. All right, so we're clamping it. We're going to compress it. To, you will feel it stop when it gets to the coal bind. Bad boy's got a lot of pressure on it. But you know, that's what I was saying. You gotta have a big vice when you're doing this. You see it's squeezing, squeezing. That's my coal bind right there. So I've got coal bind. So now I'm gonna go get my dial calipers and measure it. And you wanna measure it from here to here. So they advertise this coal bind at 1.15. So 1.140. So they coal bind like exactly where they're supposed to. I mean, they are 10 thousandths off. I mean, you can't beat that. I mean, you know, that is, that's on point. That's exactly what you want. I Got the head back together. Everything is fine. Everything looks good. Really talking about the spring stuff will help you guys in selecting your springs. If you ever get in a bind and uh, don't have pro professional assistance. All right, appreciate y'all watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And go fast and get some wind lights.